Hey there, and welcome back to Transformers Fall of Cybertron! You've all been asking for some FOC modding? Well, here it is! This first video is going to run through the basics of FOC modding. Unlike with War for Cybertron, there aren't a lot of simple modding techniques you can do in the Coliseum for FOC, as there are no robo devs to swap, and set commands are no longer functional. So, if you're looking to do any mod for the campaign, that's going to require some additional tools. However, multiplayer is highly moddable with just the Colossed, and I'm going to run through some of the cosmetic options you have available to you. These include adding custom colors, adding custom parts, and modifying your Energon color. I also need to add the following disclaimer. There are certain behaviors and exploits that are frowned upon in the multiplayer community. These mainly include giving class-specific abilities, weapons, or chests to other classes in public matches that break the natural order of the game. Now, feel free to mess around as much as you'd like in private matches, but please keep any public matches strictly to cosmetic changes only. Any changes outside of these cosmetic ones could result in you getting banned. So please mod responsibly. All right, with that out of the way, let's get this show on the road. Let's start with creating custom colors. This is a pretty simple operation, and becomes all the more simple if you have some decent color editing experience. If you already have some experience in the past with decoding the War for Cybertron Colossed, you should already know what to do. However, as a brief recap, you take the Decoder and Encoder tool, which you can get in the link in the description, click the Decode option, select the FOC Colossed, name it accordingly, and you're all set. You can also make a duplicate for ease of access. Alright, there's your refresher. Now on to what you're here for. Open the Colossed, and in your Colossed, search for Autobot Colors or Decepticon Colors. Beneath these, you'll find a series of text designated for color swatches. These are unique datasets that supply color options for your custom characters. You can create a unique swatch for pretty much any color you want. For this example, we're going to use an Autobot swatch, but the procedure is much the same for the Decepticon faction. First thing we're going to do is copy the last swatch from the Autobot swatch data and paste it right after the previous one. Now the step after this is critical. You'll need to change the data provider and unique ID sections. Typically, you just move this up by one number just to keep it simple. Failure to change these two sections will either result in your color not showing up in the customization menu or appearing as a duplicate of the previous color. So if you added a new color and it isn't showing up, check one of these two sections. Now, that's all for the basic setup. Let's get into how this data works in regard to the actual colors. The swatches use RGB values, which stand for red, green, and blue. And it's a model that is used for all possible colors with the highest possible value being 255. So having a character with 255 for all three values will result in them being solid white. And reducing the blue and green to zero, but leaving red at 255 will result in a character that is solid red, and bringing up green to 255 will make it full of yellow, and so on and so forth. Whichever color is the highest in this code will be loaded first. So let's say, for example, we have a primary red of 200. That red will supply us with both the lightness and the saturation, or the intensity, of that red. Now, if you want to make the color weaker, you would increase both the green and blue values. I generally recommend making saturation changes very gradually, as Fall's color system seems pretty sensitive to such changes. As a general principle, I like to make such adjustments by 5 at a time, if you're working with a pretty bright or strong color. Though, if you're working with a darker color, you may want to go for maybe two at a time, if even that. Like I said, Fall's colors are really sensitive to saturation changes, especially when working with a darker color. Working with mixed colors is much the same way. Whichever color is the highest will be the most prominent on the color. For example, here is a character colored with red at 127 and green at 53. If we were to swap these around, notice how the green is now more prominent. And if you wanted to weaken this color, you could just bring up the value of the lowest color. In this case, blue. And that's pretty much all there is to know when it comes to custom colors. Now, let's take a look at Energon colors. These can be found by searching for Faction Team Autobots or Faction Team Decepticons in the Colossed. There is also an additional Ally Slash Enemy Team based set of Energon colors that can be enabled or disabled in the Options menu. 
These colors can be found in the color set by searching for MP same team, but for the sake of this tutorial, we'll stick to the standard Autobot and Decepticon colors. So, Energon colors work roughly the same as the color swatches do, though the values you'll be working with are slightly different. Energon colors work via decimal values. So you'll typically have a value around 1.0 or so for the main color, and around 0.5 or lower for the other two. Of course, this depends on what the exact Energon color you're looking for is. Generally, the same rules for custom colors apply here. The strongest color is loaded first, and the other two values can either mix to create a different color, or weaken the main one. Think of 1.0 as the default maximum value, similar to how 255 is the maximum for color swatches. The exception being, you can go beyond this value with Energon colors. What's also nice is that Energon colors are seen only by you, so feel free to go absolutely bananas with them. That wraps up Energon colors. Finally, we move on to custom parts. These are a bit more limited in regards to what you can do in the color set, but I'll go through the basics first. Parts are designated by a short data provider that includes the part type, what class it is restricted to, and the path to the part in question. Let's say, for example, if you wanted a specific part to be available on every class, you would set up the class restriction, like so. There are plenty of mods that do this type of thing for you already, but still, it's helpful to know. One of the most common mods seen for parts is merging one part with another. You simply include the paths to the parts you want in your custom part data provider, and you're all set. Just make sure you have a unique ID so that the part does not replace an existing one. Now, in the cases with chests, whichever part is loaded first will indicate what vehicle your character turns into. So, say for example, if you merge Onslaught with Scattershot, and Scattershot's chest is loaded first, he'll turn into a tank. But if Onslaught is loaded first, he will turn into a truck. So you can have the exact same looking character functional across different classes. You just gotta make sure they have their own unique data sets. Another lesser, but still noteworthy mod, is adding more customization to the arms. Seeing as each arm is its own part, you could actually have asymmetrical arms just by swapping one of the part models with another. For example, here we have Breakdown's arm on the right, and Drag Strip's on the left. You can even take this a step further by doing the same with the caps and arm ups. As a quick note, the caps are the top portions of the shoulder, you see here, and the arm ups are the lower pieces beneath them. Both the caps and the arm ups can be modified individually, leading to a whole mess of customization options. And that really is the basics of cosmetic modding when it comes to the Colossed. It is fairly simple stuff once you've messed around with it for a while. However, the content in this video is nothing compared to what you could do with other tools. Expect many more FOC modding videos on the way, as we have not even begun to demonstrate what you can do with this game. So. I hope you all found this helpful. I will see you soon with more modded content. Stay tuned.